Semi-final number one, your top qualifier, Tom Blomqvist, won two of the four qualifying sessions earlier on today to sit in that TQ spot and take the pole in semi-one. Then it's Sievert Svartal, Jonathan Paye, Rokas Pachuska, and Alex Day. Svartal won a session as well. Svartal, I think it was, that won Q1. It was. Blomqvist, uh, three and four. Timmy Hansen won Q2, and of course, we'll see him in the second semi-final. Blomqvist, the winner, last time out in Norway. He also managed to beat Shane Van Gisbergen in Abu Dhabi. He was the only driver to beat him there, so he really is one of the favourites. On the inside, and real world round across, we have a staggered grid for the semi finals. Here in esports, we've got a line grid, and that's that makes it quite hard work for Blomqvist on the inside. No breathing space at all. He's got to get a perfect start. And he's got to hold off those drivers behind him, will be hungry to take the lead. Remember, the top two go through, and the fastest loser from the two semis. Brilliant start on the outside again. I wonder if there was a glitch there with the two drivers who got away so quickly. It's a fail race has gone joke lap now and in behind him goes Pai and Bachuska. Bachuska pushing Pai wide almost into the wall on the inside. And then uh, slotting in Sievert Svartal who hasn't jokered was left at the line there slotting in fourth place. But it's Tom Blomqvist who's out front. Bachuska over the grass on the inside. Bachuska's gone over the grass. I think he's taken out with him. He's run, certainly run somebody off ride. It's, it's Alex Day fail race has been run off wide by Bachuska. So the stewards might have a look at that. That was up in the velodrome. Bachuska trying to come around the outside now of Paye. He's going to have a look back up, see if we can find the traction down towards the first corner. But most importantly of all, oh, look at that. Out, taking out poles down the outside. Bachuska's trying really hard. He looks up the inside again and can't quite make it work. But look at the gap, Neil, that Tom Blomqvist has got. All of this squabbling has played into Tom's hands here. I mean, he's quick anyway, and he's quite likely to go off like a rocket. But this, um, the fighting between Bachuska, I mean, it looked like he accidentally, or sort of assertively took fail race out anyway, but now he's trying to make his way through uh, Jonathan Paye and Sivet Svardal, and it's not going to be easy. He's got to try and get it, collect his head and, and sort of get rid of the red mist that seemed to descend in lap one and two. You can see Bachuska's rig in the bottom right of your screen there, and you can see he's actually using a proper hydraulic handbrake to the right-hand side closest to you in the picture, which he used to just get the car to turn in. Let's watch and see. There, he uses it again on the way into the right-hand. You might even see him use it on the way into Velodrome here. Watch, there it is, a little nip on the way in, and that just rotates the back of the car. In a real car, disengaging the diff, locking up the back wheels, just giving it a bit of rotation, and then assisting the car on turning. So Bachuska is in full-on race mode here three screens up, proper sim rig, and we'll be seeing him uh, in the World Rallycross Championship later this year. Blomqvist leads Second. by 3.3 seconds, Neil. He's going to be completely unchallenged here, but it's about whether or not Svartal can make enough of a gap. Can he find enough of a gap here to hold on to P2? Yeah, because he's got Jonathan Paye coming in close behind him, and Paye's, of course, jokered and has clear air as he hunts down Svartal. Uh, but Tom Blomqvist, you know, he, he, this this will be a circuit that will be in his DNA because his dad, Stig Blomqvist, would have raced here, uh, the original Stig, the old the ex World Rally champion as well. Um, and he's absolutely flying, and it's the perfect opportunity to, to just show how quick he can go with those hundreds of hours of practice laps I've been watching him do on Twitch. Svardal has managed to put the gap up to 1.2 seconds. So Sievert Svardal has not given up the fight. He hasn't joked. He's got to do that joke. It's up to 1.3. Tom Blomqvist runs a wheel up the barrier on the outside. But this is about Sievert Svardal. Here he is. So look, he's now, what is he? He's, he's, uh, he's 1.4 up the road. He's taken a tenth a sector of Jonathan Paye since about a lap and a half ago. And Jonathan Paye is no slouch at sim racing or indeed Real life rallycross, Sievert Svardal right at the front of some of our European support categories. Gonna go Joker lap now, so watch for Svardal. You're looking for the Joker with Jonathan Paye. This for a spot in the final, into the Joker lap. Gotta get it in close, oh, it's a little bit wide. Gonna have to be late on the throw. Paye coming in hot, but Svardal holds on. That is an epic performance, Neil. Yeah, that's chapeau to Svardal. He really, really had to deliver that, and it's a risk. You always know how dramatic that Joker merge can be. He fully committed. And he's, the reward is coming out in front, and now Aya is just going to hope coming round to take the semi final, going to take the win in semi one. Blomqvist crosses the line to book a slot in the final on pole. Sievert Svardal fought like mad for P2. Jonathan Paye, was that him tapping the wall or was he on board with Bachuska? 
So Paye's time is a 3.45.8. So Paye, a 3.45. That, the reason we need to keep an eye on that is that the fastest loser will go through. So that is Jonathan Paye in uh, in third place in this one. But Tom Blomqvist, an absolutely emphatic win after a bit of carnage in the first couple of corners. Blomqvist just checked out. Svartel's the one for me, though, Neil. I, I can't believe how hard he put... Well, OK, we're going to get straight on to semi-final number two and find out who's going through to the final with those guys. Timmy Hansen and Kevin Hansen, the World Rallycross champion and the P3 man from last year's World Rallycross Championship, his younger brother, competing in the very cars in which they compete in the World Rallycross Championship. You can too with Dirt Rally 2.0 from Codemasters. Brilliant game. Henrik Krogstad is, in fact, their junior driver, driving for Yellow Squad, which is the team they've set up to support young drivers coming through. Then Hayden Padden and Fabian Pye. Hayden Padden, a factory-level driver from the WRC, and Fabian Pye, one of our best rallycross drivers from France. So these guys, all top-level competitors in four-wheel drive machinery. Krogstad coming from RX2, which is the support category in the World Rallycross Championship. You'll be able to watch it soon, and it'll be starting from here, Hollius in Sweden. Don't miss it, I promise. If you've never seen it before, it's well worth tuning into. Here we go. Great start by Krogstad in the middle. Timmy Hansen on the inside as well. Hansen going to get to the first corner first. Where's Krogstad with Kevin Hansen behind two? Bit of contact between them. Oh, he gets a nudge. Timmy Hansen runs wide. Kevin Hansen up the inside. Been passed there by Pye as well. Krogstad's off in the boonies on the left-hand side. He's off through the grass and in the wall. Timmy Hansen coming up over the crest. Hayden Padden is in behind him. So Timmy Hansen got a great start, but I don't know if he got nudged on the way into the first corner. Kevin Hansen is leading from Fabian Paye. Yeah, there was a lot of chaos. I mean, turn one is famously chaotic in most rallycross races, but that was relatively clean. But the person who came off worst, Timmy Hansen. It looked like there was a moment where Kevin Hansen's uh, car body language was slightly protecting his brother's car, but then he couldn't do enough and Timmy did slightly get nudged. Right, so Timmy Hansen in third place, desperate to find a way past Fabian Pio. Fabian's made it through to the semis, but he was in P10. Timmy was up in P2, I think. So Timmy definitely quicker up the inside into Velodrome. Ah, oh, typical World Championship style move up the inside by Timmy Hansen. We've seen him do that before in real life. He makes the pass on Pio. A little bit of contact. For me, the pass was good, but it was aggressive. Now he's going to chase his brother down. Neil, he needed that second place in P3. There are no guarantees. And for me, with him being mugged in turn one, he may have lost time already. So he needed to guarantee second place and not try and rely on third place and potentially losing out by a couple of tenths of a second. Historically, I'd say Timmy Hansen is one of the best on-track overtakers I've ever seen in Rallycross. When he needs to, he pulls it out of the bag. And while Fabian Payet might feel that he lent on him a little bit too hard, I think that was a fair Rallycross move and it just shows how good Timmy Hansen is and how opportunistic and in tune. His kind of um, his senses of, of what works in Rallycross is just sort of died in the wall. Yeah, that, that was a hard pass. And Timmy is known for hard passes. Let's not beat around the bush for that. He is known for hard passes. He made a hard pass to win the World Championship down in Cape Town at the end of last year. Uh, Andreas Backer, who came second in the championship, wasn't over the moon about it. Timmy comes out of the joke lap in second place. Kevin Hansen still to Joker, but 1.7 should be enough to see him beat his brother in the semi-final. But you've got to make those passes, Neil. You know, it, it, the thing is, when someone says, oh, he's a hard passer, but so is everybody else, you can't tell me that most of these guys wouldn't make that hard pass given the choice. They basically, they run a very fine line between getting called to the steward's office or not on a pretty regular basis. And that's why the sport's great, you know? Yeah, you know, it's the old phrase, isn't it? If you don't go for a gap, then you're no longer a racing driver. Kevin into the joke lap, going to try and come out in front of uh, Timmy Hansen. Going to hold on. Timmy was closer than I thought, though. Still a second between them, which is comfortable. There was never going to be contact, but luckily it's not time-based. Of course, once you get to the semis, it's all about position. A part of place. Kevin down into the right-hander just before the jump. Could be an upset on the cards, though. Fabian Paillet is not going to make it through to the final. Could Hayden Patton? Is Hayden quick enough? Kevin Hansen going to take this one. I think he's got just a little bit of a lap to go. Well, Timmy made a mistake in the background. Mistake by Timmy Hansen. You saw him run across the curb on the inside of turn two. Just a little issue for him. He's going to be further off the back. It doesn't matter because he's guaranteed a spot in second place. But uh, Hayden Patton, what's the time? He's got to be 345.8. 
Kevin Hansen going to take semi final number two to go through to what I think is going to be an epic fight for the win at Hollis. It's the one they all want to win in real life. Kevin Hansen crosses the line. His brother Timmy Hansen's in the final two. Hayden Cadden will have to check his time to see whether or not it's quick enough. Hayden is a 3.48. It's not. So it's going to be Jonathan Paye that goes through to the final from semi final number one. And then we've got Kevin Hansen. And Timmy Hansen going through from semi-final number two.